Welcome back. Remember, uh, Manish Sisodia's custody is being, uh, um, uh, the ED is right now seeking to extend that custody and we are bringing you some breaking inputs right now. As far as the hearing at the Raja Avenue Court is concerned, the Enforcement Directorate has seek seven days of remand of Manish Sisodia. And this is what the ED has to argue. It's saying that there are certain fresh revelations that have come up. There are some aspects which we cannot disclose clearly over here. The ED has also gone on to say that we want to confront Sisodia uh, with, with uh, C. Arvind again, who was the former secretary to Manish Sisodia. Now, the ED uh, says that he was using a mobile phone for nearly eight months, but it was changed on July 22nd in the year 2022 uh, and this interestingly is the same day when the LG forwarded the complaint to CBI. Uh, according to the ED, uh, Manish Sodia says it was damaged but the enforcement directorate is of course highlighting the timing which is very important to note over here. Let me quickly bring in our correspondent Anshul who is joining me live right now. Anshul, important to highlight the kind of argument that the enforcement directorate is building in terms of seeking this extension of custody. They have some very strong points over here even though I know that uh, the senior advocate uh, Mohit Mathur who is opposing the ED right now on behalf of Manish Sodia has also made some counter counter arguments but before we delve deeper into it take us through what the ED has to say. So yes, the ED has put forth one of the most strongest arguments. They have said that they have found uh, some new evidence. In fact, they have found some new email dumps. And uh, through these email dumps, they are going to confront uh, Manish Sodia through this. And hence, Manish Sodia's custody is very, very important for the enforcement directorate. Also, the court, uh, court in fact, asked uh, the enforcement directorate why they cannot confront Manish Sodia with C. Arvind on the 18th and 19th. Uh, itself, but they have they have clearly stated that on the 18th and 19th there are statements to be recorded of the of the likes of C, C, R, C. Arvind and Arun Ramchandra Pillai as well, and K. Kavita is also summoned on the 20th of. Uh, 20, 20th of March itself. Uh, so yes, when all these statements would be taken in, then Manish Sisodia would, would be confronted with those statements and would be confronted with people in person. Uh, so yes, the ED has put forth this right. point that yes, there is in, uh, there is requirement of Manish Sisodia inside the inside the enforcement director custody because yes, there are other people whom uh, with whom Manish Sisodia needs to be confronted because it is right. through their statements that Manish Sisodia was uh, initially taken into custody by the enforcement directorate. Absolutely, Anshul. Having said that. Um, now, senior advocate Mohit Mathur, who is representing Manish Sisodia, has made a counter-argument saying that there is no way that the enforcement directorate has so far been able to prove the proceeds of crime and that the same people were being confronted with Sisodia uh, by the CBI are again being confronted by ED. Uh, well, definitely, if you see the CBI is actually looking into the uh, nitty-gritties of the manner in which this entire policy was framed, whereas the enforcement directed, if you see, is looking at the money trail and from where did that 100 crore rupees of kickback come and where did that money go. Uh, to to finalize that, it, it becomes really, very really important for the enforcement directed to actually confront Manish Sisodia with the same uh, same people because, yes, uh, these were the handful of people who were actually informed in the framing of this policy and not only the framing of this policy, but also in the imp implementation of, of the policy. And ED has already proven in its charge sheet, in fact already mentioned in its charge sheet that how Vijayanayar was in cahoots uh, with the entire so-called South Lobby and how Vijayanayar actually used to provide information to them about the nitty-gritties of the policy that was being formed in the national capital. So yes, uh, the people who are involved, those are just a hand handful of people, but yes, uh, the manner in which the CBI is investi investigating the case, they are looking at the nitty-gritties of the policy and how did uh, people actually get hands on a draft copy of the policy even before the policy was made public, uh, whereas the enforcement director is trying to find the money money trail and the 100 crore rupees that is being alleged that that was given as kickback uh, where did that money uh, from where did that money come and where did that money go also the enforcement director today in, in its argument have said that it was through various meetings that the profit margin uh, of the of the liquor sales was in fact increased from 5% uh, to 12 percent even after uh, knowing the fact that this is going to be a, bear a huge loss to the exchequer and even after that this policy uh, was implemented and in fact these changes were made uh, in, in the policy so yes all these questions would have to be answered by Manish Sisodia himself whereas on the other hand the lawyers right. of Manish Sisodia are clearly stating uh, that um, Right, Anshul, important to also talk about as the uh, live updates are pouring in. Uh, uh, let me also run us, uh, run our viewers through what has been uh, uh, what's been sent by our legal correspondent Ananya Bhatnagar, who's reporting currently from the Rouse Avenue Court. He just sent us an update saying that Sisodia's counsel is arguing that Dinesh Arora was present in the ED office on 15th of March and that 
yet there was no confrontation done between Dinesh Arora and Manish Sisodia. So clearly, Anshul, uh, the case being built by uh, Manish Sisodia's counsel over here is that due diligence is not being done in terms of this investigation uh, as far as this investigation is concerned and that the ED is unnecessarily taking time and they are also saying that they are not able to prove the proceeds of crime. Uh, the other argument they are making is that uh, just because they are not able to prove the proceeds of crime doesn't mean that Sisodia uh, uh, custody be extended. Well, yes, that is the entire case that the ED will try to prove uh, the proceeds of crime and the ED will try to actually uh, tie Manish Sisodia uh, to the manner in which the kickbacks of rupees 100, 100 crores were given. But if you look at the arguments that have been made by the councils of Manish Sisodia today, they have put uh, several serious allegations on the enforcement director. Basically, they are trying to point out that it is the enforcement director actually wants to delay uh, the, the, the investigation and wants to harass Manish Sisodia and that is the reason why they are seeking uh, more, more custody. As you rightly mentioned, that, uh, that Dinesh... Aroda uh, was in fact in the ED office on the 15th of March itself and even then the enforcement director did not confront Dinesh Aroda and Manish Sisodia but yes that is the prerogative of the investigating officers at what point does the IO feels necessary for Manish Sisodia to confront with the with the other accused also the councils have uh, come on record and said that the interrogation that has happened over the last seven days those interrogations happened for uh, just four, four, four to five hours in the day they say that they have CCTV footage because remember the last judgment that, come, that came from the court, it was very clearly mentioned that the entire investigation uh, should happen under a CCT, uh, uh, under a CCTV camera. And now the, the lawyers are alleging that Manish Sudhya was not interrogated by the uh, enforcement director. In, in fact, he was just interrogated for four to five hours. In fact, Manish Sudhya himself has now come out and said uh, in the court that uh, he is investigated only in the second half and he is not uh, he is not talked to in the in the first half itself. So Manish Sudhya basically also trying to put this point across uh, personally that the enforcement director is actually trying to harass him. Is actually trying to uh, break him down mentally to uh, to uh, get to the points but yeah uh, uh, but yes uh what remains to be seen if the court will actually right. consider these arguments because it is definitely the prerogative of the investigating officer and the agency to uh, to look into the investigation and in what way or what manner uh, in what way or what manner is the inv investigation is being done so yes it remains to be seen how does the court respond to all these allegations and all these claims that are being uh, put in front of the court by the lawyers of Manish Sisodia and Manish Sisodia himself absolutely uh, and in fact we will continue to track this case very closely we will keep coming back to you on uh, remember, uh, the ED has made a very strong argument saying that we don't want to break the flow of this investigation. Things are developing and in fact, the ED has also claimed that they are working in alignment with the CBI and are awaiting an email dump that the CBI will be providing as far as this investigation is concerned. We'll be tracking this case very closely. For now, it's time to cut to a short break. Stay tuned to CNN News 18.